Hey, what up, Facebook? It's your boy, Bouchon Glover. Happy Memorial Day weekend or Memorial Day Monday to you. We still quarantining. It's a beautiful day today. I think it's about 7, 10, 7 I don't even know what time it is, to be honest with you. But let's talk supreme power. White supremacy versus supreme people. Now, I had a conversation with a... Uh, a white supremacist. One of the coolest cats I've, I've ever met. And he explained to me what white supremacy really mean. And this particular white person, he said, I can use this conversation, but just don't, you know, say his name or whatever the case is. This person is a independent, grew up in the South. Okay, showed me pictures of uh, his his the Confederate flag showed me pictures of his uncles and you know their history, and he says that that history is to be preserved forever. But me and this particular person, when we had this conversation, we touched and agreed that okay, you do have supreme power, white supremacy, but he understand and he confirmed that blacks are the supreme people. I'm gonna say that again. The black race, the melanated race, and this nation, we are the supreme people. And it's a big difference between white supremacy and supreme people. See, people, see, I'm an individual. I can only control what I can control. But just imagine if there was millions of people that thought the same way that I thought, that had the same ideas that I had, and was willing to put their personal disposition to the side to look at the greater good of the big picture and that's truly the reason why we're here today having these conversations in 2020 about race in america because race in america the chapters of race morning the chapters of race have not changed it hasn't changed and people don't understand that people don't understand that people don't understand that we're still dealing with race and the reason why people say, you know, one thing you don't talk about, the one thing you don't talk, the two things you don't talk about, you don't talk about religion and you don't talk about race. But from moving forward, that's all we're going to talk about because it has, is it, it applies to us and us only. Why would you as a white person or immigrant or anybody want to talk about race when you're just trying to get some food stamps? You're just trying to find some place to live. You just got to this country. You know, me no speak English, you know. No comprende amigo, pinche negro. You know, they'll call us niggas too. Why would you want to talk about that? And if you was a woman, why would you want to talk about race? And I'm going to use my sister, my sisters. Say you're a woman, recently graduated college. You're going through the application process. You're going through the application process. And you want to get a job, you want to get a mortgage, you want to move on. So why would my sisters want to talk about race when they're looking for security? Now, if they got some kids, oh, now they ain't talking about no race. You know, it's, it, 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 it's not even a, you know, a, a topic of discussion. But for us as black melanated people, for us to survive, you know, we're going to have to frame our future. You know how they say, you know, it's not chess, it's checkers. You know, they say this all the time. I mean, it's not checkers, it's chess. Okay. They say it all the time. I know the game of chess, but I can't find nobody to play with me. So I, my average bros, we don't play chess. But I got uncles that had to play bid whiz with me. I got my mama play uh, spades with me. So let's look at this. Now, from a race perspective. Not from a you or I perspective, a you or I perspective, from a race, the whole group. We're going to have to be on one sheet of music if we want that music to sound good. Now, you musicians out there, could you imagine trying to do some good work in terms of a recital and somebody's on the wrong page and everybody's sounding bad? Come on. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, you know, which is debated. But the race thing. So, since we don't play chess, and it's a two-party system, okay, 
Republicans, Democrats, and we don't have a seat at the table as a race. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And like I said, we play big whiz and spades. OK, so what are we going to do? We're going to invite them to our game of spades. But this game is rigged. We got big Joker and little Joker, our trump cards, no pun intended. And we only need two books to close the chapter on race in America. So how do we want that to look? And I think that's what we need to be talking about. How do we want that to look? Why are we sitting back looking at elderly people, our elected officials, our elected politicians in their 80s, framing the country for the, its future? But we're going to talk about that. And the reason I'm doing this stuff, because I'm trying to get your energy on a whole different level, because I need some people to at least be on the same sheet of music. I need some people to be on the same sheet of music. Because where we are today, man, it, it, it's, you know, 2020 was supposed to be clear vision. But I'm sure we all focus now. But moving forward, race in America, white supremacy, supreme power. How do they stay in supreme power? They're on the same sheet of music and they stand on one accord, whether they're Republican or Democrat, to make sure that the former slaves don't grow, that the former slaves don't do what they were to naturally do. Because look at every situation in this 50s, Jim Crow, hanging niggas on trees, 60s, blew all of politicians heads off. That was for change, which was the civil rights movement. John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, civil rights over. And we've been stuck on second base for 55 years. And now we got this pandemic going on and the world is kind of, you know. So all I'm saying is we got to declare in our hearts that we got to understand that there's a system that's set up against us. And if you understand that the system is set up against us, did you understand how to play the game? You won't fall into no traps. OK, now you look at Joe Biden right now. The hashtags going viral. I already ordered my you ain't black shirt. Because he not black, so he really don't understand. And he don't know that we know that he wrote the 94 crime bill. He said that we black people, black men, he don't care about personal disposition. And please listen to me. Joe Biden said he don't care about our personal disposition how we were raised, where we come from, it doesn't matter. And if we could rehabilitate some, if, if only one of them, it's not going to be on these streets, it's going to be in jail. That's what Joe Biden said. And we debating about voting for him? Could you imagine if our ancestors was here right now, knowing that he's a segregationist? He voted on the segregationist side. He's a liar, he lied about Martin, he lied about everything. And right now he's suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. The Democratic Party is basically doing elderly abuse on this guy, trying to get him in office so they could basically say, oh, Mr. President, sir, sign this. We don't know what they're going to be signing. But how are we going to get through this? Race in America. So white supremacy, supreme power. So we're going to have to stick together as people and deliver ourselves from crab bucket syndrome. So if you're in that crab bucket, let go. That's all you gotta do. Stop hating on your brother, motivating and encourage your brother because we got work to do. Because some of us can't just sit still and sit down and act like, you know, we're just gonna follow along. When I hear black men say, no matter what, I don't care what happened, I'm voting for him. That's a slave. If you don't have any options mentally, you are a slave. No one could tell you what to do and how to do it. We in America, we've been free for a very long time. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. So how in the hell are they gonna tell us who to vote for? And then think about, it. think of your grandparents and your parents. They took the, what they call the uh, sharecroppers deal. Now we want the, the old black deal. Freedom, justice, and the American way, true equality, from a social and economic perspective, resources in communities of color, 
and we're going to basically vet the Democratic Party. So I'm doing this to kind of get you on your mindset so you can actually start doing some of the work, you know, and, and, and open your eyes and don't let them lead you into a trap. Please. Don't let them lead you into a trap. Ain't nobody telling me who to vote for. I can vote for whoever I want to vote for. I'm a free black man. 1865, they signed that dotted line. The Republican Abraham Lincoln in support of the Republican abolitionist movement. So, I'm going to just give y'all some game real quick. Now, the whole purpose was race and supremacy. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I want you to understand the system has been perfected. The system is working perfectly. When you got big, strong brothers, I don't care what nobody say, I'm voting for Joe Biden. You forget Trump. Nigga, Trump got the bread, bruh. You want our community to change? What's happening? We're going to have to get the money, socially and economically. We can't just sit back and take the sharecropper deal that our parents took. Now, I understand it's easier to get along than to be hung on a tree because my people was ran out of the South and chased by white supremacists who became LAPD and sheriffs. Fact. My grandfather told me about my great-grandfather, Woodrow Glover, who fought the Civil War and was killed because he voted Republican the first time he had a chance to vote in South Carolina. So when the Democrats talk about we fought to vote, no, they killed us. Just think about this. I'm going to stop right here. Think about this. Now, just imagine if we was the slave masters. I got me about 30 of them. Okay. And we lost the war. Now, all 30 of these jigs are free. What else going to do with them? Think about that. Just yesterday, there was your slave. There was your property. There was your three-fifths human. Now they're men. Now there's $8 million of Freedmen's Bank money allocated and put aside for the newly freed slaves. And that's where the reparation money at. So we need that with interest in 1865. So what they did was, when he signed that Emancipation Proclamation and freed the slaves, John Wolf Booth went in there and blew the president's head off. And the slave masters started cutting deals with the slaves. Now, nigger, you here in the deep south, where you gonna go? You can't read or write. Uh, sir, I, I, I stay here. So think about it. The Confederate Democratic South just lost their slaves. Now you got plantation owners with slaves that's totally free. Are you going to let them flip the script and be Republican? Are you going to let them be your enemy now? Or are you going to force by force, make sure that they support your party by force? And when I say by force, I'm saying you can look this up. The Democratic, you can look this up. The Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1865. The Ku Klux Klan was established the same year as a covert military, op, uh, military group to basically keep the South and stay in control. And we still voting Democratic today. Ask a Spanish person, a Mexican um, Democrat, say in Spanish, she said, demonio. I said, that sounds like demon, huh? She said, yeah. OK, think about it. The Democratic Party, oh, man, I'm telling you, the Democratic Party is the anti-American party. And this is the truth. Share this video and I will say this to Nancy Pelosi. I want to I want to be in a room with all the big wigs, because when I holler at Trump, I want to already have vetted them and talk to them. So the Democratic Party is anti-American. America is a republic to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, a God fearing republic. The Democratic Party lost the war. So instead of dismantling the Democratic Party, who separated from the Republic and bringing them to heal, like Hillary said, they just let them grow and grow and over the whole process, still in control. But game over, though, that, that's that's the whole situation moving forward. So I'm saying when it comes to supremacy, and the supreme power people. Just think of supremacy. If America left us alone. Now, I don't want to go back to across the, the river. But this, just say, for instance, after the Civil War in 1865, America said, you know what? You guys are free. 
here's your uh, your Freedmen's Bank money. Start building to start growing. I guarantee you the world would be a different place and they know it would be a different place. So they have to put strongholds and blockades to basically to exist. Tell me this, how can the Democratic Party exist without the black vote? Tell me this, how can a Demo Party, Democratic Party exist when they was the party of slavery? So we cannot change the root. You know, if it's citrus, it's gonna always be citrus. You can't, it's not gonna turn to an apple or an orange. So the, the, the deception is real. So how can, just think about it. Just think about it and just think it as, as black men, as black men, just think about how proud our ancestors would be if their descendants chopped off the left wing of the two party system. And we stood alone as individuals, as a protected race. Now, when you talk about supremacy, why do, why the, 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 the large elephants with the tusk are protected? because they're beautiful creatures and there's, they call, they call it big game hunting. So when the big game hunters go out there, that's their pride. They love that. They big game hunting, but they're extinct now. They've been big game hunting us all these years and we still here. And that's my point. Just imagine if they got off of our neck. Just imagine if they didn't do what they do, shooting us while we jogging and, 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 and all of this stuff. And it's all an inferiority complex because they need the system to work so they can stay in power. Because if it wasn't no system, I could find 10 of me and I guarantee you we'll run every block. I got two or three homies on there on this right now that I know without a shadow of a doubt. If the police stayed out of it, if they didn't shoot us and bring drones and use their military force, we could run, we could run blocks. Just me and a couple of the homies. So just imagine all those prisoners, prisoners that's in jail. All those alpha males, those alpha alphas. Just imagine if they had the right mindset, the right training and the right teaching, the game would be over. But the game is over because at the end of the day, Joe Biden said, if I don't vote for him, I ain't black. So I guess I ain't black. So we, we gonna talk about this for, for, this is our trump card. And like I said, no pun intended. And when I say Trump card, I'm not trying to say I'm down with Trump, but he is the president of the United States, man. So if anything gonna change, if anything gonna happen, if anything gonna change and if anything gonna happen, it's gonna come through him. When they talk to Joe Biden talking about his plan, nigga, you ain't even in office, you can't do nothing. It's all hearsay. And what I'm saying is we all one degree away from separation. I need to holler at some people. So if you could get this out to somebody, I need somebody with some resources, somebody with a voice, somebody with some that could, you know, because we really could change this game real quick because I'm telling you, I've been having so many deja vus and snapshots of, of a whole different game, you know, and the word niggas, we taking it back. Look up the word and I'm asking you, look up the word niggas, any -E G-U-S, singular and plural. It means king, ruler, emperors and sovereign from the 14th century, Ethiopia. Look it up. That's where the word nigga come from. So we niggas, N-E-G-U-S. So what's up niggas, niggas and niggets? You know what I'm saying? King, ruler, emperor, sovereign. Niggas, N-E-G-U-S. King, ruler, emperor, sovereign. I'm say it one more time, niggas, N-E-G-U-S. Kings, rulers, emperor, sovereign. So let's take the word back and let's stop allowing our parents and grandparents to make decisions for us and let them sit down and we'll protect them and make sure that they're okay. Because the next pandemic, man, we gotta be healthy, we gotta be strong, we gotta be in a position to basically not feel as though it's attacking us. Now, 98% of all blacks that died from COVID-19 was elderly or had pre-existing. Some people don't even think it's real. I don't wear a mask. I'll wear a mask if I go in a spot and they say, you gotta wear one. And I understand why the president won't wear one. Because as soon as he put a mask on, what they gonna say? Yeah, we finally put a muzzle on him. He's gonna go viral, so Trump is smart. Okay, but Dems are dumb. And like I said, I wanna debate anybody. Cause my, on my side, the Democratic Party is the Antichrist Party. The party that don't want your kid praying in school. The, kid, the party that wants your kids uh, confused, like Dwayne Wade's son and EJ, because with the Willie Lynch, you know, they want us to raise our children in reverse. 
So we're going to keep talking about it. We're going to be about it. That's what I'm talking about. Niggas, N-E-G-U-S, kings, rulers, emperors, sovereign. So basically what we're requesting is Trump cuts deals, so we want a peace deal. Get off of our heads, man. Leave us alone. Let us see what our potential is. You know, let us see what our potential is. See, they got us on this on this other stuff because they don't want us to see our potential. Just imagine post Civil War. They was like, OK, y'all just figure it out. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And some of that did happen. So with the example of Greenwood, Oklahoma, they slid through there and said, wait a minute. These niggas got banks. These niggas got what the. Oh, we got to shut this down. And the United States government aided and abetted the destruction of Black Wall Street. So moving forward, we got a president in, that's in office that's being treated like he's a nigga. They're lying on him, throwing everything at him. So as blacks, I declare right now we are independent, sovereign group. We are not a part of the Democratic Party. And Stacey Abrams said that if you know who Stacey Abrams is. Stacey Abrams was running for governor in the state of Georgia. OK, she didn't win. But Stacey Abrams was asked a question about the Democratic Party in regards to identity politics. Now, in the civil rights era, yeah, we, we felt like that they was on our side. OK, but they wasn't on our side because there was the same ones that put us in the situation. So it was game. So now the Democratic Party is for what would Dave Chappelle say? The alphabet people, some of them L, some of them B, G, T's and Q's. But black ain't in that. But it's some black LBGTQ. So rock with us. The Democratic Party for the immigrant. You showed up Tuesday, so go get your benefits. The Democratic Party is for women. We believe all women, women's groups, black lives matter, the whole nine. Black don't fit in that. All right? So we're going to be moving forward. And I just need our mindsets to just, you know, switch a little bit, just to change this frequency, man. We're going to talk about it. So thank y'all for <laughs> walking with me this morning. I'm about to run the rest of the way. But uh, supremacy, supreme power, could only be managed or maintained if everybody's in on it. And all white people are in on it. White supremacy. But the supreme people without debate is black people. Supreme people is black people. Because I've never heard of any black people being scared or hunting White people. Now, when I said the big game hunting, we're their pride. If they could keep us down, we're their pride. When a police officer shoots somebody, they probably kumbaya. They're probably laughing, you know, because they really don't care. You know, but we're the pride. We big game hunted. Now that we know it, now that we can say, look right at them, say, hey, stop. You got caught. <laughs> so if you out there hunting, Wild animals, if you hunting, you know, big, big elephants with the ivory in their tusks, which is a whole lot of money. If you hunt lions and tigers and you need their mangs, that's because they're more powerful and you feel like you're great just because you can do that. That's us. That's us. I'll take a fair one with any of y'all, but it ain't going to be no fair, fair one. You got the system on your side. So niggas like me got to go run and hide because why? If I ain't the one getting tarred and feathered, I'll be the one beating, beats the crap beat out of and made the example. So we're going to figure this thing out. But you cannot be the most powerful beings if you have to strategically put a system to stunt their growth and strategically pop them off one by one. So we must be the shit. You know, that's what I'm here to tell y'all today. We must be the shit. So just imagine if we got our shit together. Or it'll be a better place. We can and we will. Now with that old fake Democratic change, Obama change and all that. Obama is the nigga that was at the door when we was out there picking cotton. I'm sorry. White mother, Nigerian father, nobody know where he grew up with. Nobody saw family picture. Who is this dude? You know, and they always throwing him out there. But we ain't rocking with your homeboy, nigga. Obama, we ain't doing that. Not this time around. So blackout 2020, if you can't pull the trigger on any of the candidates, you know, and if, and if you do have to feel like you have to make a selection,
Just write your name in there. Write Jesus. I don't, I don't know. But if you feel like you have to vote, and you have no choice. Then you have a slave mindset because ain't nobody told you you had to do anything. Just imagine if you didn't vote. What's going to happen? And if Trump win, who cares? You know, who the president was in 1860 and on down. We couldn't vote. We was picking cotton, but we made it through that. So we're going to be all right. OK, so let me get out of here. But Drew Simmons says, uh, why is the Republican gerrymandering closing voting booths early and don't want voting by mail? Because of fraud. Because of fraud. Because if you vote by mail, I can see every Democratic congressman getting an assignment, getting an assignment, <laughs> you know, from the Democratic convention to mail out one million mail-in ballots. That's why. And I'm going to ask you guys, if I had an opportunity to be the um, work with the government as a what you would call a press secretary, like like not Republican or Democrat, but just like a press secretary for the United States government, like a unofficial because there's a position and I'm thinking about taking it. So if I'm in that position, believe me, I'm for us. <laughs> Anything come out of my mouth. So what I'm saying is some of us are going to have to make some moves and, you know, we're going to have to be supported and you guys going to have to pray for us. You know, but with that being said, man, hey. White supremacy is real. So in closing, we got two books to win this game. We call this our trump card. No pun intended. It's to close the chapter on race. We got big joker, little joker. So we have to frame out our future. So thank you, Jesus. We made it through. We're on the other side. This is our promised land and it's time to build. So with that being said, man, keep checking in. Uh, that Willie Lynch coming soon. God bless you. Happy Memorial Day. All right. I'll see y'all. Okay. That's what's up. Peace out. Have a good day. We shine glory.